What we've got right here is a 155 horsepower C2 1503. And it's no good. Let me give you a little backstory on this and tell you what we're going to do. This engine was hydrolocked at high RPM. And there's a reason for that. And this is something that I've talked about with the uh, TR1 unflip process video that you can see on my channel. C2 engines have the same basic design as far as how the intake manifold is. Let me show you and explain what, what this problem is and why it's something you need to be aware of. So this is the intake manifold off of this engine. And don't know if you'll hear that on video or not, but it has chunks of the piston from, I believe, cylinder number one on this uh, particular engine. And what ends up happening though, the inherent flaw, air comes in here into this main kind of chamber area and then comes up these long runners. So you can see these runners that feed up to these three intake ports, uh, which directly mates to these three ports on the head. And so what can end up happening is if you submerge your c or your Yamaha with a TR1 that has a manifold kind of similar to this design where there's a large like log type area at the bottom with individual runners that go up to each cylinder. If you flip it, submerge it, get water in here somehow, water can sit in here. You could have water almost all the way full in this log part of the manifold. And you can start the engine and it will idle through the little bit of air space at the top where it can go up the runners. But then when you rev it up, the increased suction will pull that water up and you get a high RPM hydrolock, which is what breaks pistons, bends valves, stretches head bolts, causes all kinds of stuff. Bends rods, maybe I already said that. So when we replaced this engine, it had caused so much damage that we could see chunks of aluminum coming out the intake valves and out the exhaust valves on cylinder number one, that this intake manifold is a total loss. There's no way to disassemble this. And with the aluminum in there, I was not about to put this on a brand new engine and risk blowing it up. So I replaced the manifold and the engine, and we have this one sitting here. And I thought it might be fun to do a little bit of an autopsy video, show you some of the carnage of what happens with a high RPM hydrolock situation on one of these naturally aspirated 155 horsepower C2 engines. Okay, let's take a look and see what kind of carnage there is in here. Everything looks good in the top end. Set our valve cover off to the side. Got to hit record. Cam chain tensioner is off. Alright. Cam chain guide out. That looks to be in good shape. And their gear out. I'm just going to drop the chain because it doesn't matter. It's out the bottom anyways. This engine isn't going to go back together without being retimed and everything. So it doesn't make any difference. Um, our tensioner there is in a good spot. At this point, let's pull these eight uh, bolts as well as we got two e-torques down in there that just hold the end of the head on. If you forget those when you're assembling an engine, it can cause an oil leak, but not much else. They're also a very nerve wracking bolt to put in, because if you drop it, 
it drops right down into the bottom of the engine. All right, let's pull these big four, eight. Then we can lift the head off. For this, I'm gonna turn your volume down. Did just notice a wee little bit of carnage visible up here. So our one rocker for an exhaust valve here on cylinder number one, which is our problem cylinder, is completely shattered. So that is a problem. Um, our other one is fine. All the rest of the Top end valve train stuff looks okay, except for this rocker. So I'm betting we're going to see a lot more carnage on this specific valve. Probably something tapped that and really caused us some damage. So let's pull this head off now that we got all of our eight head bolts out and our two little ones way down in there. And let's see what we can find. Typically, because these use a multi-layer metal gasket, you can just pop the heads off by hand. All right. Oh, oh, ho, ho, ho. Yeah, look at that. Well, every one of these valves is bent. This intake valve is toast. Um, and if you look down in here, you can't see it right now, but I can. I'm gonna bring the camera over and show you uh, just exactly how bad off this engine is. Um, so that you can know why you don't want to hydrolock your c engine at a high RPM. Let's take a little look down in there. Now, if you're new to the channel or new to engines entirely, uh, a cylinder is not supposed to look like that when assembled. It should look more like this, except without giant chunks of aluminum, which came from down here. Um, more like this, you know, like should, should should have a piston in there and not just a mass of exploded parts. Uh, this thing ground up, my goodness, that's, that's the end of the connecting rod. It snapped the rod in half. There's a wrist pin that's jammed in there. That, oh, that was a part of a piston. My goodness, look at that. Whew. That has taken some beating. What else do we have down in here? Most of this stuff is stuck. Uh, there is just carnage. I kind of want to pull the bottom end apart now too, just to see how bad it is on the other side of the case, because externally this engine looked A-OK. -okay. So let's flip it over and uh, all this metal is going to fall out of here, but yeah, let's do that. Do you see electric impact? I'll take these out. Of course it will. This one right here, we're going to have to get in and dig out. Piece of piston. It is preventing my socket from fitting. There, now it's down somewhere deeper in the engine, so that's fine. Okay. All right, we got the big boy hammer here. There we go. We got a nice little gap. A little bit of a gap like that. We can come in and kind of separate these halves. <laughs> I 
I hope that the amount of metal falling out of this shows up as good in the video. This case is ruined. So it has blown a hole out through the bottom. We've got wrist pin uh, things, all, all kinds of stuff. This, this is, this is totaled. Case is cooked. I'll put this over in the garbage pile. And yeah. I mean the bearings themselves look fine. All of the crank journals look good. But the crank is totaled. This thing is beat to death are the counterbalances. Um, the case is cooked. I mean, it's, it's damaged this part of the case up here. So in my mind, that's very interesting. This engine has oil squirters. It was my understanding that only the supercharged engines got piston oil squirters. This is a 155 and it has piston cooling. Very interesting. Um, but anyways, regardless to all that, um, this engine is wasted. Um, counterbalance shaft might be able to be reused, like that's good. Um, but the crank, the case, you know, we, we can salvage some little pieces um, for when I blow up the sea don't Like we might need, you know, little things here and there, but for the most part, this guy is done for. So, hopefully you have enjoyed seeing just how much carnage there is inside a SeaDo engine when you hydrolock it at high RPM. Now, I'm a little bit curious. I kind of want to get this freed up enough that we can... There's our wrist pin. Look at that. Got our wrist pin freed up. We got other chunks of metal just falling out. It's raining metal out here. Rather than this connecting rod turning on the bearing, it is quite literally pulling the crank out of the case as I'm doing this. So, rotate this just a little bit, get all the oil out of this we can, and ultimately, I'm not reusing anything off of this. It's, it's gone. It's done. But it was sure interesting to pull apart. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching me tear this apart as much as I've enjoyed tearing it apart and doing a little autopsy. Now, if you enjoyed this, make sure to go down below where you're currently watching this video into the comments section and let me know you enjoyed it because I actually have a number of other C2 engines that have failed from various things, whether it's supercharger failure, um, all kinds of stuff. And I have other engines too, Hondas and uh, Yamahas and all kinds of things that have failed from various things. If you'd like to see some autopsies of some of the other engines I've got, make sure to go down in the comments, let me know so that I know this is something that you're interested in seeing. And I'll see what I can do, whip up some videos on taking various engines apart. But anyways, that's all for now on this pile of scrap metal. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.